Hey everybody, today we're going to be looking at the Poly Studio X30 for Microsoft Teams. Um, and I'll take you through also how you get it up and running and ready to connect to your first meeting. So let's take a look at it. So this is the X30 here. It's a pretty slick looking device if you ask me. It's quite small as well. Um, as you'll see in the review, it sits up on top of just a standard uh, you know, PC monitor. Um, so you know you could potentially use it for the home office, but it would also work in, in smaller meeting rooms as well. So there she is there. Okay, and it has a a display mount here. So basically this has a little screw here. You just screw that onto it uh, before mounting it. And then you've got a bit of a lip here that sits on the front of the screen, as you can imagine. Uh, and this little hinge, very similar to a small sort of webcam that you would have on your PC, right? So that kind of fixes up uh, on your screen like that. So let's just get that guy out of the road for now. Okay, and let's just look at the ports that we have uh, available to us. So uh, there's the network port, of course. Uh, you can connect this thing via Wi-Fi as well. Uh, there's a USB port a display uh, sorry an HDMI input okay now in Microsoft Teams mode that is not yet supported maybe it will be in the future not sure uh, but if you're using this as a poly device or potentially in another meeting vendors mode say zoom that may work I'm not quite sure that's a USB-C port looking at the installation guide it appears to supply power only um, I'm not 100% sure on that and then that's the output to your to your monitor Okay, you got the Kensington uh, lock uh, and the power input as well. Now, out of the box, um, you get a power supply. Uh, you it comes with a network cable and an HDMI cable. Um, then there's this guy. Uh, he comes with a network cable. This is the Poly TC8. So this is the display. And it's a touch display, so you can interact with uh, the uh, X30. Okay, and this just has a um, Ethernet in. Supports power over Ethernet, so you don't need any additional power. And when you plug this into the same network as the X30, it will discover uh, the device. Um, and as you'll see in the review uh, of the configuration, that you can authorize this device, basically, um, to attach itself to here and be a controller for it. It's quite uh, deceivingly heavy. It's quite a small device. It's, it's, it's a nice size. It doesn't get in the way uh, on the meeting room table. So that's really nice. And it's quite low profile. So, um, you know, you can see over the top of it pretty easily. Okay. Um, and it's nice and heavy as well, which is great. So it doesn't, it's, you know, it's quite hard to move. Like I'm giving it a good push with my finger, right? Um, and it's only moving slightly um, thanks to this kind of rubber uh, footing that it has here. So that's the hardware. So when you pull this thing out of the box, plug it in and power it on, it's going to boot to the screen here. Now to get the best experience out of this thing, you're going to want a touch screen really. This is just a run of the mill PC screen. I can't touch it. I can't do anything with it. But I've plugged in a, a mouse and I'm going to use the mouse to configure this uh, out of the box. It also supports keyboards as well if you wanted to use a keyboard. Um, and post configuration, you'll have this little controller unit, uh, which is actually optional. But um, if you do have this, you'll have this little controller unit that you can use as well to kind of act as a mouse uh, going forward. So let's hit continue. So after you've hit continue, it does a little bit more setup. So we'll just wait for that to finish. So once the system comes back up, you'll see that we've got an IP address and an admin username and password. Now that password is just the last six digits of the serial number. So you can always get that from the back of the device, uh, should you forget it or, you know, and you haven't changed it from the admin uh, portal. Okay, so that's the default password. 
All right, so let's jump in and actually look at the configuration. Okay, so here we are at the login screen. Uh, we'll just double check that IP is correct. Yes, it is. Okay, so admin uh, and the last six digits of the serial go in there and we sign in. Okay, so here we are at the home screen. So what we want to do is we want to switch this into Teams mode. There are multiple modes that this thing actually supports. And if I just go into general settings and provider, I'll show you a few of what they are. So you can use Polly's native uh, one. Um, you can use Zoom Rooms, Microsoft Teams, GoToRoom, and 8x8 meetings as well. So we're gonna uh, select Microsoft Teams because that's the topic of this uh, particular video. So let's select that. Now we're gonna need to save and reboot the system. So you'll see that that's happening right now after I've saved it. And if we jump back over to the actual device, you'll see that that's in the process of rebooting itself. Now once that's finished, we'll go back to that configuration portal and I'll just take you through a few things, uh, bare minimums that I would set up. Okay, we're back to where we started pretty much, but we're now in Teams mode. So let's go use the mouse and go register later. Choose the English or the language that we want. And there we go. So now that's the Microsoft Teams interface um, right there for us to sign into. So you can't sign into Microsoft Teams from the Poly web interface. So you need to use the Microsoft app to sign in, which means you can't do it from the web uh, GUI that we saw just before um, and you'll need to interface directly with the device so you can do that either whether you've got a touch screen uh, mouse and keyboard uh, or there's a, a nifty way to do it where you sign in from another device and that's where I'm going to show you today because I think it's the easiest it means you can use the mouse and keyboard on your laptop uh, or other device whilst you're in room configuring this thing up so I'll show you that the other methods are pretty self-explanatory. You enter your username and password directly on the device from that Teams app that we just saw. So we'll just let this thing reboot again um, and we'll be ready to show you that. All right, now we can sign in. So again, I'm using my mouse. Uh, in your case, you may have a touch screen. Um, so I'm gonna click sign in. We get the very familiar Microsoft sign in uh, prompt here. So again, if you had a mouse and a keyboard or you wanted to use uh, a touch panel, you could enter your username and password. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go sign in from another device because I think that's the easiest way to do it. So let's click on that guy there. Right, we now have a code. Okay, so we're going to go and enter that code at microsoft.com slash device login. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so browse to this URL up here. Okay, and now we want to enter the code that's displaying on the... Uh, Studio X30's uh, dis display. Okay, so that is for me P6 NT A F E D B. Okay, so let's enter that. Now, what you're going to want to do is to sign in as the device account for for that room. Okay, so. If we jump back over to the meeting room device, we should now see that actually signing in. So it's a nice simple way to enter a, a username and password, which can be a bit of a pain when you're dealing with a touchscreen device uh, and don't have a keyboard directly connected. Okay, there you have it. So we're now at the home screen of the meeting room device. So as I said, there's a few other things we want to do. One of which is we want to pair our TC8 touchscreen device. So we're going to jump back to the web interface to do that. Okay, so let's go back to the Polycom admin site. Sign in. Okay. So, let's jump through. So we're in Microsoft Teams mode. Um, probably you want to set your country code. So for me, that is New Zealand. All right, that saves automatically. You can see we're in Microsoft Teams provider mode. Uh, you may want to change your language at a later date, possibly. For me, that's okay. Uh, down here in this part of the world, we've got a different date format in the default, so we'll change that. Time zone, Auckland, Wellington, that's good. So here we can also pair that touchscreen device if you have one. So hopefully that will show up, there it is. 
Okay, so it's found that TC8 device. It's unpaired at the moment. What we'll do is we hit pair. Okay, it'll ask if we want to do that. And in a minute on the touch screen, we should see that as successfully paired, which I am seeing. And there we go, we're now at the home screen on that device. Next thing you might want to do is give it a nicer name. You might want to give the room a name. Um, there's various settings in here. Uh, for example, sleep, when do you want the monitor to go off, things like that, uh, that you may want to consider. Out of office uh, times, um, so the screen can go to sleep to save power. Uh, various other things worth having a look. You can also connect the device up to Wi-Fi if you want uh, to use Wi-Fi rather than uh, a network uh, cable. At the moment I'm plugged in via network. Under audio settings, you may want to enable acoustic fence, so that's Polycom's technology to improve the capture of uh, audio from the person who is speaking. Just a note on video input, so content from the HDMI cable is not supported at the moment, um, possibly it will be in the future, so I'll show you how you actually in inject content into a Teams meeting uh, shortly. Here's where you change the administrator password. You probably should do that so that other people can't log into it if they know that the last six digits of the serial is in fact the password. And if you need to reset to back to factory, that's you use this one here, so reset all system configurations, or you can simply just restart the device if that's all, all you're wanting to do. So that's kind of the bare basics of, of the configuration. Um, you can actually start using the device now. So let's go and have a look at that. As you can see, I've got a test meeting up on the screen there. Uh, to join that, if you had a touch screen, you could touch the button to join. Um, I have a TC8 here, so I will join using that. So there's a, just a join button right here. If I hit join, it's going to go ahead and join that meeting. And there I am. Hello, everyone. All right. So you can control a number of things from this uh, touch screen here, this TC8. We can control the mute. You can turn that on and off. We can turn tracking on and off. So at the moment, the camera's actually framed me. You haven't seen that happen, but if I turn it off, you'll see it jump back a bit. There we go. So that's giving you the the full uh, width of the of the of the camera. So if I go and turn that back on, it's going to try and frame me up. There you go. So you can see that just sort of panning and zooming into me. Now if we had multiple people in the room, it's going to attempt to kind of capture all of those people uh, in that frame. You can bring up a dial pad uh, and dial a number from this touch panel and we can end the call and control the volume of the call. Now these, this, this circle thing here is kind of a, a, a I guess a equivalent of a mouse and I can I can track over some of these controls on the screen uh, and select them. So for example, uh, from this touch panel, uh, I don't have any of these options. I can't control them directly from the touch panel. So I may need to use this. In effect, it's, it's a mouse um, and it lets you navigate the screen. Now something that you may want to do is share content into this meeting. Now you can't directly connect anything or use the likes of Miracast to wire wirelessly share. So what you need to do is you need to use the proximity join feature or or the or look up a meeting room to, to share content into it into the same meeting. So I'll show you I'll show you how to do that and you can do that from ideally a device that's got Bluetooth because that will automatically pick up the room that you're in based on the pro proximity, but you can also look up the room as well. Um, and I'll I'll show you how you do that quickly. When you're using the Poly Studio uh, X30 in Teams mode, the HDMI input 
is not actually supported at the stage. So the workaround to that is to use what's called proximity join in Microsoft Teams. So I'll just show you quickly what that looks like. So from a laptop, I am uh, a user who has uh, signed into Microsoft Teams and who has been invited to the same meeting that the Poly Studio has joined. Okay, and I'll show you what proximity join looks like in that case. Okay, so if I go into my calendar in Microsoft Teams, you can see I have a meeting here. I'm gonna click join. When I go and do that, you'll see here that the meeting room is already there and I can join with um, audio off. Now the way it's detecting that is it's using proximity sensor uh, via Bluetooth. So I can just simply click that and that will join me into the meeting. You can see there I've now joined the meeting. Uh, and then what I can do is I can do a, uh, a share of content from here. So for example, um, let's just share a web browser. There we go there. Okay, so that's actually gonna pump that content into the meeting. So uh, not, not a major really. Um, it'll be nice hopefully in the future if the USB cable is supported and, and even potentially wireless casting, um, but not sure what the story is there for the future. And that brings us to the end of the review slash configuration of the Poly Studio X30. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments. Otherwise, feel free to subscribe to our channel on YouTube.